There are things in this interview that are probably going to cost me my doctor. They're probably going to cost me my supply of marijuana. I don't care. This has to get out. Bob Ellison is nothing if not a survivor. Bone on bone in your right knee? Bone on bone arthritis in my right knee. Painful? Very painful. The flow of pain was constant, so Bob's doctor put him on an opiate, Vicodin. But over time, Bob says his body built up a tolerance and he needed more pills to stem the pain. Doctors told Bob that in his mid-30s, he was too young for a knee replacement without risking that he'd later wind up in a wheelchair. So he took the pills and started to become a drug addict. I was taking 12, 14, 16 pills a day. I was supposed to be taking three. And at night, Bob would lay in the dark and say the same silent prayer. Please God, don't let my wife find me dead from opiates in the morning. And every time that happened, I was braver and I would take one more pill that day than I did the day before. But worried that he was going to die soon, Bob made a radical choice to transition from opiate pills to marijuana to help manage his pain. This isn't some stoner stereotype about getting high, man, and playing hacky sack and all that. No, this is people's lives. This saved my life. A 2014 study in the Journal of the American Medical Association concluded that states that have legalized medical marijuana have about a 25% lower average death rate from drug overdoses than other states. Another study found marijuana helped by 30% or more to control chronic pain, the reason people like Bob turned to it. I want to take medical marijuana for pain because I don't want to be an opiate drug addict. I was an opiate drug addict. That concept that you could use marijuana to treat chronic pain is highly controversial. Many experts regard marijuana as a so-called gateway drug, one that leads to harder drugs. The government schedules many opiates on what's called Schedule II, drugs that can be abused but have some medical value. But marijuana? Marijuana is scheduled as Schedule I, meaning the government sees it as having no medical value. Is it harder to study if it's Schedule One than Schedule Two or Schedule Three? It's harder because there are more restrictions on it, absolutely. But the restrictions are there for a reason. But the most important thing, it's not impossible. We also have to just end the DEA monopoly on medical marijuana research. At a Senate hearing this year, several lawmakers pushed to change the law to allow more marijuana research. I know some people are saying that we should wait until there's more research before changing the laws. But the one thing that's blocking the research is the law. The DEA schedules drugs based on a review of scientific studies conducted by the Food and Drug Administration. But in its most recent review, the FDA found only 11 studies that met its criteria. The FDA said 11 studies was too small of a sample to draw conclusions from, but added, quote, the studies reviewed produced positive results suggesting marijuana should be further evaluated as an adjunct treatment for neuropathic pain. And here's what the FDA told Congress. There is a perception that being in Schedule 1, marijuana is somehow less attractive for research. And, and, and I've heard that, and I think Dr. Weiss has heard that. Changing that perception, I think, has the potential to be powerfully important as far as supporting better research. We now know from the experience of millions that there are benefits of medical marijuana. We know that broad uh, coalitions of medical professionals believe that marijuana should be an option uh, for medical purposes. If marijuana was killing people, it would be on the news. It would be in the paper. It would be an epidemic. It's not. Opiates are the epidemic. A lot of studies have not been done simply because of the classification that the drug currently has. Which prevents doctors from learning more about how marijuana may or may not treat pain. I believe the additional research would certainly be helpful. Marijuana can kill you one way. If it falls out of an airplane, if somebody throws a bale of it out of an airplane and it hits you in the head, that's the only way marijuana is going to kill you. Like other drugs and alcohol, marijuana certainly can contribute to deaths, most notably if drivers are high and kill someone in the trauma of a car crash. But in Ohio, more people now die from heroin and other overdoses than from all types of car accidents, whatever their cause, combined. And Bob says marijuana doesn't have the awful withdrawal symptoms that opiates can. His doctor had wanted him to stay on opiates, though he said new rules on prescribing them meant Bob would have to come in more often. The doctor looked at me and said, this is what the uh, DEA wants, so fine. I'm going to get rich peddling dope to you. That's what your doctor said? That's what my doctor said. Bob doesn't favor marijuana abuse, just its medical use for people like him. 
People try to control severe chronic pain without overdosing on opiates. I don't think that I would still be alive if I was still on Vicodin and not using marijuana. It saved my life. Bill Scheel, Fox 8 I-Team.